Heading via Zoom once again to catch up with a long-time strategic consultant on health policy. Uh, he's been around for a lifetime. It was the man who engineered uh, the, uh, the policy on uh, HIV uh, almost a lifetime ago. His name is Bill Botel, and he joins us, as I said, on uh, The Informer. Bill, it, it seems like uh, two lifetimes ago when we were talking HIV, which came, scared the world, and of course we've gotten over that. The next big scare, and it's still taking a toll on us, uh, COVID. Uh, and of course, over the last few days, we've seen finally the beginnings of a massive vaccination rollout uh, starting in Australia. Uh, what have you made of it? And what do you think uh, we've done right? Or what do you think we're doing wrong? Well, uh, thanks, George. And yes, it's been a remarkable year, really, uh, just over 12 months ago, uh, when uh, not very many people had heard of coronavirus or COVID at all. And then look what's happened. So uh, there are lots of lessons we can learn from the last year. Uh, in my view, the, the most important one is that we could have stopped all of this before it got started. Uh, if we had done the right preventive things, uh, before. Uh, it's always been known that viruses cross over from the animal kingdom to humans, and it happens every day. Uh, thousands, millions of times a day, viruses try to do it. And if we're going to stop that, as we have broadly in the, uh, in the West, by proper uh, uh, animal husbandry, by uh, markets, uh, by uh, air, you know, cold storage and all of those things that we've done over many years, we reduce the risk of viruses crossing over to the human population. So we can prevent it. We know how to do that. And uh, that's always been able to be done if we have the right public health mechanisms at work to stop it. And when it does cross over, we have to move like lightning to make sure that we contain the problem and we don't hope for the best let it run and then get to the situation that we've seen in the United Kingdom, the United States and uh, Europe. So I'm glad that in Australia, after a, a rocky start, uh, the people prevailed that they wanted uh, no COVID in their lives. We knew that if we had restrictions for a while on mobility, that is, uh, you know, uh, the lockdown period, uh, if we use masks, if we had uh, social distancing, all of those things kept us pretty much in the end at zero zero with problems of course in victoria and elsewhere until we can come now to where we are where we've got real good news uh, the vaccinations and so on which we hope will make a big dent in the uh, transmission of the virus around the world in australia so uh, i'd like to see a lot of thought being given in the next uh, period to really strengthening our public health systems and to do everything that we can to make sure that viruses never get an even break, whether it's crossing over in markets, whether it's poor animal husbandry, uh, poor handling of uh, uh, possibly infected animal products. All of that has to be look, looked at very hard and we've got to have a better system for detecting the viruses in time when they do emerge. Uh, the rollout has started and already we've seen some challenges. Uh, seriously, uh, we need to address the training of all our medical uh, professionals. Um, yeah. We saw an instance only the other day in, uh, I think in uh, far north Queensland, where it was a nurse had to step in because the doctor administering the, uh, the, the vaccine to the two elderly patients in an aged care facility uh, didn't appear to have the mastery over this multi-dose uh, vaccine unit uh, that he had in his hands. Uh, that tells me that, uh, you know, it's all well and good to have provide online uh, backup, but we need, we need to get them out there to actually do the testing face to face so they know that the, the pitfalls, surely. Well, it's not that we haven't had a long time to do this too, you know, that this uh, uh, prospect of vaccines coming online has been with us from like September, October last year. And here we are almost at the beginning of March. 
So the logistical questions and all the important training questions that you raise really ought to have been uh, thought through and implemented uh, before this. Uh, in that we haven't, owned, we've only just started vaccinating people in this last week. Well, in the same time in America, admittedly under very serious circumstances, they've vaccinated over 42 million people. That's almost twice the population of Australia. So uh, the training is important. The logic of it's important. In my own view, as we have about zero, zero in Australia, and we do have outbreaks under very good control, I think we have to keep looking at the border arrangements. And uh, if I had a say in this, which I don't, but if I did, I would be looking at the priority vaccinations being given to the people who are at the borders, Front line. Uh, to, the, to the airport workers, to the hotel quarantine workers. And I think in due course, as we go through this year, we've got to look at how do we vaccinate uh, Australians overseas who wish to come home? And they've got to be vaccinated, I think, with the very good vaccine, like the Pfizer vaccine. So I think uh, a lot of this has to be thought through. Uh, we've got to get on with the vaccines uh, distribution in Australia. Uh, certainly, I think with AstraZeneca, uh, which uh, is not as effective on these new variants as the other vaccines, it's possible we may have to go through a round of booster shots in about six months' time because our problem is the variants of COVID are emerging around the world. And unfortunately, each of these variants is not so good, more, maybe more infectious. Mm. And each variant needs, with some of the vaccines, a, a tweak. So we want the vaccine that covers what we've got now, but the variants that are likely to come along. So, look, it's great we're doing it. I don't uh, want to be no, no, Bill, 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 I want you got to get on. Uh, Bill Botel, you've been you've been with us now for a year. It's incredible that we've had a year together. Uh, we reached out to you at the very beginning and you were terrific. You came on board and you there was so much we didn't know and yet you used the experience that you had garnered uh, rolling out the challenges to take on HIV many, many years ago during the 80s. And that was a fantastic opportunity for us to, to learn and to, to mature in this discussion. But the thing that fascinates me is we've had instances even over the last couple of weeks in Victoria where um, we're still making the same sorts of mistakes. Uh, people are still struggling with the concept of a mask. And I'm wondering if it's to do with the, 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 the poor messaging that we got early on, that we didn't need masks. And then when they said you needed masks, people said, well, if they're so important, why didn't we get them from the beginning? So do you think that's played a, a huge role in the conundrum we have at the moment? Yes, I do. And Honestly, one of the greatest frustrations of this last year has been the advice that's come from a very small group of uh, uh, supposed experts about this question of aerosol transmission. And for all sorts of obscure academic reasons, this group set against the use of masks. Now, perhaps a year ago at the beginning when people didn't know the qualities of the virus and so on, you could have an argument then. But as things developed, particularly in the United States and Europe, and things got worse and worse, it became really clear that masks were really useful and good. Mm. They were Masks were to COVID like condoms were to HIV. Yeah. Yeah. And by about the middle of the last year, this was completely settled. Yet the group around the senior advisory groups uh, adamantly resisted the use of masks. Well, I think Daniel Andrews in Melbourne about July said, no, it's got to be done. And then a bit later on, uh, uh, the Premier of New South Wales has said that masks had to be used and uh, on public transport. That wasn't until about November. And this really helped. And it's really clear from America where the caseloads are coming down. It's not coming down quite yet as a result of all the vaccines, it was coming down because people were using masks and they were restricting their movement around the country. So that works. Now, we've got to look at, at a system that allows 